Hi, welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 88. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming by every Saturday. If you're a new viewer, thank you for stopping by. And if you haven't already, please click the little red subscription button down below. If you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. So let's get started. I have done a lot of knitting this week and crocheting this week. Um, the elephant of the room. I finished the, the Mobius cowl. Um, it's, it's more of a cowl than it is a Mobius, at least for me. I will stand up so you can see. This is where it crisscrosses. A Mobius is basically a shoulder type of, of scarf that's circular, like an infinity scarf. Um, and it crisscrosses just like an infinity scarf usually does. So that's where the crisscross is, is right here. And I will stand up so you can see it on me. And I am totally aware it really does not match anything that I'm wearing. And it's not going to stay on because it is 90 degrees. And I'm in an upstairs bedroom with the air conditioning turned off. So, yeah, it's going to be a little warm. So let me take this off. Okay, let me show it to you up close. This was the pattern. It's called the Crochet Shells Mobius. And you can see on the model, it fits over her shoulders. Now, it does crisscross on the pattern. It's just the crisscross is in the back in this particular picture. This is a free pattern. Um, it is on redheart.com. I'll put that right up there so you can see it redheart.com. It is a free pattern and it's basically the shell stitch. And if you have not been watching, I'm a new crocheter. I'm mostly a knitter. I can't even tell the front from the back of this. Um, I think that's the back. So here is the front and there you can see the shell stitches. This was yarn that I got from a knit crate box a couple of months ago it was called prickly pear and it's in audine wools is the type of yarn and it's in four different each it was two skeins and each skein had four different colorways in it so it started it has this kind of a lime green and then it has this color which is kind of a a sage type of green and it's a little tonal you can see some differences and then this is probably one of my more favorite colors. It's kind of a avocado. Yeah, I'd say avocado type of green. And then there's this one, which is the darkest green. And then it repeats again. So I completed one skein uh, last week, and I completed this with the other skein this week. Now, the big debate last week was as wide as this was, and I had finished the first skein, I only had um, lengthwise 15 and a half inches, which if it was doubled, because I had the two skeins, I was taking an estimate, I was only gonna have a 31 inch, really short scarf by the time I finished. So my debate was, should I rip all of it out or should I keep going? Or, and rip it out and then make it narrower, like this, this, this wide instead of this wide. Well, as fast as this crocheted up, I thought, eh, we'll just crochet the whole thing, and worst case scenario, I just rip it out. It's no big deal, uh, because it did it does crochet a lot faster than knitting, so it, it went pretty quick. By the time I finished it, it came out to 34 inches. It was 34, 33 inches. And then I blocked it, and if you follow me on Instagram um, or on ra um, Facebook, I posted a picture and it actually, when I blocked it, I was able to stretch it out to 44 inches. So it did shrink back a little bit when I took it off the blocking wires and it shrunk back one inch. So it actually turned out 43 inches. And then I just put a twist in it and hemmed it together, seamed it together right there. This was, this is where I began and this is where I ended. So here's where I put the seam down through the back. So it did come out to a total of 43 inches by the time I finished, and that is literally all I've got left of the yarn. That's it. And this is probably gonna go into my little scrap stuff for my cozy memory blanket. 
Um, I always save little teeny pieces of my yarns for a couple reasons. It, eventually, they might end up in my cozy memory blanket, but the other thought is if I ever have to do a repair, of course it's got to be in this color, but if I ever have to repair something on that, I've got some yarn. Although the only part that I can, I'm allowed to get a hole in or something would be this color, because otherwise it's not going to work. So that is project number one. Now, project number two, I have a sort of finished object. I have a finished object, but not a whole finished object. You'll understand. I have a sleeve that is completed. Um, this is to my Barton cardigan that I've been working on for couple of months now. You'll see why when you see the pattern, because the, the sweater is entirely like this all the way around. It is literally cables. Now, I'm very pleased with how well this is fitting, so I'm going to put this on. I showed it last week, but I was only part way up my arm. This is all the way up my arm now. See, it even covers my bat wings very nicely and pulls them in. Um, so here's what it looks like. And I am really happy with the way this is fitting and the length. And it will stretch a little bit when I block this. And I was really worried about this yarn being kind of scratchy because it is what they call rustic, which means not soft. Um, but it, it actually is not bad. I mean, I, I am going to wash it and block it um, because it does have like a lanolin residue on it. it you can feel it in your hands, uh, so it is going to get, of course, washed and blocked, but it, so it'll make it a little bit bigger, but not by much. So I am really pleased with how well this is fitting. So I have a finished, a finished sleeve, and I just managed to pull a bunch of stitches out. Excuse me while I fix this. Okay, crisis averted. We got them back on the stitches again. Um, I ran out of stitch holders. I do have, I showed you last week, I was using for a stitch holder notebook rings. Works great on a flat surface, but not so much on a round surface. I could get most of them on, and then when I got, like, tight in here because they were notebook rings and they wouldn't open all the way up, I couldn't slide the stitches on. So these are just a pair of old, um, one of my least favorite knitting needles, actually. These are Boy, B-O-Y-E, or Boy E, I'm not sure how you pronounce it knitting needles that these were my first set of circular needles I ever had and I don't know if you can see this or not I used them so much that the points are literally worn flat in some spots I don't know that that's going to show or not but they literally are worn flat on one side so um, I don't use them very much and and the cords on these are just really really stiff so but they worked great to hold hold my, my sleeve in place. But not only did I finish that, but I started the next sleeve and I have finished. I've gotten the cuff and I've done the increases. I'm now up to the part where I will start the cables. So got that much knit. So I was happy about that. So that is the Barton cardigan. Then I've been working on a knitting project called Pirate's Cove, and this is a pattern by um, Hillary Designs. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. There it is, and you really can't see it real well because it's a black and white picture, um, so I'll show you the real thing. It's a three color shawl, and I am knitting this in Cascade Ultra Pima cotton. And it starts in navy blue, and then my other color is a gray, and then I have a variegated color. So here it is. Can't open it all the way up because it's wider than my needles are. Maybe I'll hold it back like this. So there's the beginning, and then it's got some striping and some eyelet. You can see the eyelet right there. And now I'm back into striping in the garter stitch, and it's just striping with garter stitch the rest of the way out. And I'm just going to keep on doing that until I run out of yarn. So let me show you the two colors I'm currently striping with. 
that would be the gray and the variegated. And I didn't bring the navy blue up right now, um, but I'm hoping to finish it probably with either the navy on the other end or the gray. I'm not real sure which one. I haven't been following necessarily some of the directions when it comes to some of the colors. Because I'm using a variegated, it kind of depends on how the variegated's falling. I've kind of switched some colors around um, a couple times. Actually, I got out of order, and it worked out for the better. So anyway, that's that project. And it is living in my Birdie and Poppet drawstring bag. And um, I just drew some of the yarn out with me. So anyway, like this bag. I'm finding I like drawstring bags better than zippers. I like the looks of the zipper progress bags or the project bags but you have to be really careful with the zipper that you don't get your yarn caught or your project caught with the zipper so in some ways I think the drawstring actually works for the better so then my last project that I'm working on is the one that a lot of us are working on together and that is the tote along that we have running for those of you who are not aware we started a tote along um, we started it last week, and it will run until August 31st. We are going to have a prize drawn from the finished objects thread over in Ravelry. I have two threads open right now. Um, we have one for chatter where you can just talk, show pictures of what yarn you're going to use, whatever. It's there. Um, so we have a chatter thread, and we have a tote along finished objects thread. So in the finished objects thread, just please post your finished objects. It makes it easier for me to go in and draw a winner. So uh, you can do it in any pattern you would like. You can knit it. You can crochet it. Somebody asked if smaller pocketbooks were acceptable. Yes, I'm not picky. Yeah, this is, we do not have the tote along police, so you can do it in whatever you would like to do it in. Um, the two patterns that I had pulled up for people, because I'm a beginning crocheter, um, and I am crocheting because I figure I need all the experience I can get, and this looked like a simple enough project, although I ran into a few challenges, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. So I am using, this pattern is called the Striped Market Tote Bag. This is a free pattern. Um, I got it. It's it's yarn inspirations, but I got this off of Ravelry, um, and it's recommended to use Lily Sugar and Cream, but you can use any kind of cotton yarn. I'm just using some um, kind of nondescript. I don't even remember what the name of this is. I threw the labels out. Um, anyway, I'm using like a linen cotton blend. So here's what they look like: the crocheted ones, and mine are not going to look like this because. I've got three colors, not four. I'm just inventing it as I go. And then this is the knitted one, the knitted version. It's also by Yarnspirations with Lily Sugar and Cream. And the knitted version is Getting Things Done Knit Tote. I tried to pick two that used about the same amount of yarn that um, looked like they would be fairly simple patterns so as many people as possible can participate. So let me show you where I'm at right now. I've gotten the base done. There it is. And I'm doing mine, I only brought one of the skeins up. I'm doing mine in the gold, and this is an orange, and this is a green. Because I thought it looked very um, fall-ish, so I thought this would be a nice, nice one to take along or use as a project bag. So this is, and it's kind of hexagonal, if you can see. And that was what confused me with the pattern. So let me explain really quick what happened. I am just learning to read crochet patterns. So the section A, or with color A, it starts you doing your increases, which are all the way out to here. This is, this is at its widest, is this final strip here. So it has you increasing six stitches. You can see where it kind of where the points are of the of the octagon right in here. This is where you're doing your increases. You're getting two stitches into one. But it sets you up in this pattern and then it says continue as established. Increase six single crochet each round until there are 126 single crochets. I kept trying to figure out how I was supposed to do that because I didn't understand if I was supposed to repeat all six rows that led up to that, 
or if I was only supposed to repeat the sixth row. I kept trying to repeat the sixth row over and over again, and I thought, I've got more than six increases going around. Every time I was going around, I was adding a whole bunch of increases, and it was a little roughly looking, and I knew that can't be right. This is, There's something definitely wrong here. So finally, it dawned on me, a light bulb clicked, and I figured out what it was asking me to do. So we got it figured out. And like I said, here is the base of my tote. So that is how far I've gotten with that. I would have gotten further if I would have understood the pattern and not ripped it out over and over again. But I'm reading the pattern, so you guys are going to be proud of me. I'm finally, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm slow, but I'm catching on. So I got through the base. So that is my tote along. And we do have one person that has a finished tote so far. Um, so go over and check that out. And that person, I'm trying to remember who it was. I will insert it here. I don't remember the name, who it was that finished it. There's one person that is doing, and that's Diane, is doing a pineapple motif. Um, trying to remember who it was. But the person said that the, the tote that they made actually came out smaller than, I guess, what they would have anticipated it being. Theirs came out, they said it would be perfect for a project bag, which is probably what mine's going to be, too, because if this is as wide as it gets, it's not going to be a huge bag, even though the instructions say that the finished pro project will be 17 inches wide by 14 inches high. I don't know. It'll be what it'll be, and if it's only this big at the base... That'll be still perfect. I can use that for a project bag or pocketbook. And it's knitting up dense enough that I don't think I'm going to have problems with things falling through. However, we had a really good suggestion by Yoka. And she made the suggestion that um, if you wanted to line your bag, everybody gets those cloth, um, like canvas or cotton grocery bags, you know, for... for um, so you don't, so you can recycle, you can, yeah. The type of cotton bags that you use for your grocery store, if you take it along so you don't have to use the plastic bags. You know, this type that you can buy pretty cheap for about a buck. Sometimes they're even given to you. She was suggesting you could use one of those bags. It would work perfect, actually. Use one of those bags and line your bag. You could either sew it in place or... Or you could just pin it in place with safety pins, and then when it gets dirty, just un unsafety pin it and throw it in the wash. So, um, anyway, I thought that was a great suggestion. So, um, wanted to pass that one along to everybody. And I'm not putting the regular handles on this. This one calls for handles knit out of the same thing, but I don't like stretchy handles. So, I'm going to show you what I'm going to put on. Ta-da! Two rings, bamboo knit rings. These are, I had a, a pocketbook I made a while back, and these were the handles that I used on it. And when I stopped using the pocketbook, I took them back off again. So this is going to go with this. So I think that looked good. Kind of match it. So, yeah, there you go. So that's my handles for my pocketbook that I am going to put on. And let me show you the prize that we're going to have for our giveaway. I will be, like I said, drawing the prize on August 31st. I'll be announcing the prize um, on our, I think it's September 2nd. I think it's September, no, September 1st. I think it's September 1st. Whatever the first Saturday in September is, that will be when we announce the winner. And it's going to be Less Traveled Yarn. And this color is Lolita. It is different shades of rose, pinks, and it's not a red red, but it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a red. It looks redder here than it really is, but it's, it's more of a rosy red. So yes, that will be the prize. And it is sock yarn. It is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and there's 450 yards and it's extremely soft and squishy. So this will be the prize that somebody will win. So that takes care of that little thing. Now, I did a little shopping this week. 
there is a yarn store up in Chambersburg called the Yarn Basket. And I don't go there all that much because it's like 24, 25 miles away from me. But we were up that direction. We were getting groceries. And once or twice a year, they do a porch sale. And everything they sell on the porch is $2. $2. How can I go wrong? So let me show you what I got. All right. Here we go. I bought some of this. This is like jumbo yarn. You can see how soft it's soft and fuzzy. It's like a velour. It's Flutter by Chunky by James C. Brett. It is 100 grams. It is made in Yorkshire, England. And it is 192 yards, which is 175 meters. And it is a super soft polyester. This is going to be for the puppy. You can see it's got pink spots because she's our little princess. So I'm going to make, hopefully she'll wear it, I'm going to make her a little puppy sweater. I say puppy, she's seven years old, but she's our, she's our fur baby. So anyway, some of you have met Cricket before in, our, in some of the videos. This is going to be a little puppy sweater for her. So I'm, I've seen some patterns, so I'm just going to have to pick out one uh, that's with chunky yarn, and we'll go from there. Um, if you have not seen pictures of Cricket, she is a Chihuahua Terrier of some sort mix. We got her from the Humane Society when she was a few weeks old, but she's a little white Chihuahua. So, um, and she's our spoiled child. My daughter says the dog gets away with things that they never got away with as children, and it's probably true. So I said, but you weren't furry and, and soft. So anyway. Then I bought two skeins of this. This is, again, sock yarn. It is called Super Sock. It's The color is called Mambo Color. There is, oh, and it has aloe vera and hohobi in it. Hmm. wonder if that comes out when you wash it. I don't know. It is 75% virgin wool and 25% polyamide. It's a German yarn. And how many yards are here? 375 meters. So I'm not sure how many, how many yards that comes out to. I'll figure it out. I'll put that down here too. But it's 375 yards. So I'm guessing it might be somewhere around 400. And I have two skeins of it, but it's really pretty. Um, it's not going to be, it's probably, I say probably not going to be socks, um, but it could be. I'm not sure. I don't make a whole lot of socks because I, I can't see using expensive yarns for things that are going on my feet and getting dirty on the floor. Because no matter how much I clean my floors, somehow the socks still do not pass the white glove test. Anyway, for $2 they might become socks, but there is the colors. It's got some greens and grays and whites and like a maroony red in it. And it, the green is kind of a deep turquoise. So it's really pretty. I saw these colors and went, ooh, and that's the only two they had, so I bought both. Then I bought, they had some LRA Cozy Soft, which I am using in um, the Virus Meets Granny stripe shawl that I'm going to start working on after I finish my tote. So I bought two and that's pretty true to color. One is a brown and one is a tan. And then I got this to possibly go with them. Not sure. These also might end up in the shawl that I'm designing because some of the colors with the shawl I picked to design I wasn't real crazy about when they came in but I could put them together with this as well. And this is sparkly. This is a, it's called Nashua Hand Knits Grand Opera. It is 86% wool, 9% viscose. And it's just called Warm Brown. And if you can see, yeah, there you can see it pretty good. It's just got like that glitter like a thread of glitter going through it that's in that same coppery brown that this is in. But these just happen to go together really pretty well. 
So, and I bought two skeins of this. And let me see if I can tell you how much is in each of these. 128 yards or 117 meters in each of these. And the LRA Cozy Soft um, it is 213 yards in a 100 gram ball and it's 75% acrylic, 25% wool. And they are very soft. So that was the yarn that I bought. Then they had Addy Turbo needles for $2. Yes, you heard that right. $2. Addy Turbo needles. I I have needles that are similar to these that I've bought on eBay that are like an off-brand, but they're copies of Addy's, and I love them. I bought nine different knitting needles. I'm keeping five of them. Uh, the ones I'm, what I did is I grabbed all of the metal needles that they had. Um, I bought a bunch. I came home, sorted through the needles that I had, picked out which ones I wanted, and the ones that I either had duplicates of or ones that I didn't think I would use uh, because of the maybe the size or whatever, those are on eBay right now. And I will put a link down below if you're interested in any of the ones I have on eBay. Uh, they are starting at $5 with the Buy It Now at $6.50, I think. Um, but seeing as nobody's bid on them right now, you probably get them for $5. Um, and then you just pay your shipping. So... And the only reason I'm charging a little bit more is because there are eBay fees and PayPal for the processing and stuff and for all the, the envelope and everything to mail it out with. So if you're interested, the ones I have on eBay are um, a US 10.5, which is 6.5 millimeters, and the cording on it is a 47 inch, which is also 120 centimeters. I also have a size 10, which is a six millimeter needle um, with a 47 inch cord. And I have a US 11, which is an eight millimeter um, with a 20 centimeter or 20 inch cord on it. And one of those is a duplicate that I haven't listed yet. So um, anyway, let me show you the ones that I bought and that I'm keeping. And that is a US 10 with a 40 inch, and here it is, and it has the blue cord on it. And then I bought, um, the other one is a 10.5 with a 40 inch. The ones I'm selling are those sizes, but they've got 47 inch, uh, which works if you're for Magic Loop, it works really well. Um, I don't tend to use these big needles all that often, so I wouldn't necessarily magic loop or anything with them, uh, but if you do a lot of jumbo knitting, those are the ideal sizes for you. Um, this is a US 11 with a 32 inch. And then I have two of, this is a US 11 and a US 13, and these are 20 inch um, cables. So one of the ones I'm selling is actually identical to this. And you may wonder, what do you do with a 20 inch needle? Doggy sweater. Uh, but they also work well for knitting sleeves. If you're doing sleeves like where I'm at, where you're the upper part of the arm, or necklines, they're ideal for that because you don't have to magic loop them. Um, so they work great for necks, especially collars and stuff. So I have two of those. So let me take these out and show you. I'm not going to pull them all out because they're pretty much the same other than the, the color of the cord. But let me pull it out and show you what they look like. They are a metal needle. They have a very nice join right here. And then the cording, the cording on it actually tells you what the size is. It has it printed onto it. And it has one of those plastic cords. And if you find that these are kind of brittle, you actually, I've never tried this, but you can actually throw them in the, um, in a boiling pot of water and it loosens them up. So that is the Addy needles that I got. 
Now I'll tell you about our deals of the week. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the channel, I have an affiliate for several for Knit Crate and several different yarn places. And so each week I tell you some of the specials that they're running and I put the links down below to get to those shops. And if you do buy through those, I get a percentage of it. Um, anyway, so let's get started. I looked mostly to see what cotton yarns were going right now in case you want to join our tote along. So Craftsy has Burnett Handicrafters Big Ball which it's $9.34, but it's 710 yards. So um, I'm trying to think. This It wouldn't be enough for the crocheted one, but it might be enough. It would be enough to do the knitted one, one ball of yarn. Anyway, it is $9.34, and like I said, it's 608 meters or 710 yards. So that is through Craftsy. Knit Crate, um, if you order a subscription box, and mine should be coming in this next week, um, if you are interested in getting a subscription through Knit Crate and you click through the link down below and put the coupon code KCREATIONS20, you get 20% off your first subscription box. Uh, Knit Picks, we're back to the yarn again. Knit Picks uh, has dishy yarn, which is like what you make your, the most of like the sugar and cream by Lilies that you make your dishcloths out of. They call it dishy. They have their solid colors are $2.69 to $2.99. And they also have multi colors, so they're variegated colors. And those are anywhere from $2.58 to $3.69 a skein. Orchard Yarns, which is Lion Brand, Lion Brand Yarns has Ombre Life, which is a, a gradient. Um, it's really pretty gradient yarn, uh, and it is cotton, and it is $5.99. They also have a Kobu for $5.99. Kobu is cotton bamboo mix. It's a blend. And they also have their kitchen cotton for a really good price of $1.85. They are running a sale right now, so $1.85 for a skein of yarn. I didn't check the yardage on it. So you want to check that to see how it's going to match with whatever pattern you use. Um, and then there's Annie's Craft Store. And Annie's has a cotton by Plymouth Yarn called Clio. And it is $5.49. And they also have a Taki Cotton Classics for $4.99. So both of those are available on Annie's Craft so that is it for our deals this week. It's going to be, it's a fairly short episode this week. Um, there should be hopefully a knit crate. It usually comes in on the 9th. So um, yeah, next week, this next week, it should be in there sometime. We do have company staying with us over the next week. So my knit crate unboxing, my, it's definitely not going to be up in this room because we're going to have people staying up here. Uh, so it will be, I'll record it someplace else, but yeah, it'll be there. So we should have the Knit Crate unboxing, and I think that's it. Yeah. I am working, for those of you who are asking, I am working on a tutorial for the virus shawl. Um, I've done the virus shawl, which is a crochet pattern, but I'm getting ready to do the virus meets granny stripe um, shawl. So... I'm going to do a tutorial for the virus shawl, which is totally silly since I'm a beginning crocheter, but some people have asked, so I will give it a shot. I will do my best. So that should be coming up in the next couple of weeks, and I guess that is it for this week. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and please join the tote along if you haven't already. Uh, you got plenty of time to, to do it. It's They go pretty quick. And I look forward to seeing all of your finished objects in the Ravelry thread. The links to everything are down below in the little drop box, the description box. Just click the little show more and it'll open up and you can see all the links to everything I've talked about. So that's it for this week. I hope you have a great week ahead of you and I'll talk to you again next Saturday. Bye.